Assalamu alaikum and a very warm welcome to everybody who's tuned in or who's already uh, who's tuning in or who's already tuned in. My name is Moise Kamal and I work for Sahat Kahani. Well, uh, the purpose behind today's session is um, none other than our uh, this month's theme, which is Men's Health Month. So the purpose of Men's Health Month is to heighten the awareness of uh, preventable health problems and encourage early detection and treatment of disease amongst men and boys. Um, on average, men die almost five years earlier than women. Uh, part of the reason is that men are more reluctant to go to the doctor and maintain a healthy lifestyle, according to uh, menshealthmonth.org. In fact, uh, studies show that women go to the doctors uh, twice as much as men. Uh, whereas a survey conducted by the Cleveland Clinic in the States confirmed uh, that 40% of men go to the doctor only when they have a serious uh, health issue and never go for their routine checkups. So uh, what is Sehat Khan trying to do? Sehat Khan is trying to create awareness around uh, 12 disease-related months uh, across the year. Uh, we've uh, chosen different types of diseases for every particular month. So June is dedicated to Men's Health Month. And in order to create awareness, we've got uh, Mr. Mustafa Jamshed with us. Yes, so I am Mustafa Jamshed. I am a fitness coach uh, for the last, I would say, seven years. I've been in the industry for about 12 um, and um, not only that, I also have been doing um, my classes, my boot camps uh, with several gyms in Karachi. Uh, it's called Impulse, which I started about uh, three years ago. Um, right. And um, it's basically um, group style classes where we adopt training methods that I solely believe in. I, um, you know, implement them myself. And I try to also implement the same mindset to my clients. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'm very happy and very honored that you guys asked me to be on your platform to speak about a very important, uh, very important issue. And, um, and I'm, uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to the session. Of course. All uh, right. So um, thank you for joining in, Musafa. It's a, it's a true honor having you here with us, man, uh, pretty much. Uh, and uh, sorry about that. I was just trying to figure out the technology right here. And it's just been like extremely baffling. So I apologize. Yeah. I apologize. And uh, truly, man, you are uh, an inspiration for around 12,000 followers on Instagram. So that's that's a big, big number. That's one thing for sure. Sorry, your, your, your voice is breaking. I, I didn't catch that. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yes, yes. What were you saying? All right. No, what I was saying was that you're a true inspiration for a lot of people, man. You've got like around 12,000 followers on Instagram. You've got a massive fa uh, Facebook following as well. So that that's like a big, big thing. Uh, and um, I, I guess I was right in calling you a uh, health buff, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I would say I'm, I'm like, yes, I'm passionate about fitness. Uh, and I think uh, the numbers don't really represent, um, you know, anything in my opinion. That's just a numerical value. Uh, yeah. Like I would, if I had a choice between having a million followers, but, but you know, if I had, a, but, uh, but in, in, apart from that, like if that's out of the million people, no one's really implementing a healthy lifestyle compared to yeah. me having, let's say, 30 followers, and I know that 30 people are actually making a difference every day in their life, I would choose the latter, right? Um, so, yeah, I mean, also, like, we're in a country where I do believe that fitness is growing. It is actually, you know, um, very, very, like, refreshing and very inspiring to see that people over here do want to, um, you know, uh, be fit. Um, and uh, it's our job, people like me, to uh, not only educate them, but them towards something that's sustainable as well as no matter what their age is, no matter, uh, you know, uh, even if they, let's say, are fighting some sort of like, let's say, a disability, if they have injuries, our goal is to always, always create a platform where any kind of person, any individual, with any kind of fitness background or no fitness background can come together yeah. and, you know, be active because that's the yeah. most important thing. Absolutely, man. 
Uh, completely agreed. Because I remember as being a kid, I was a chunk. I was towards um, the chunkier side. So it was just like always an ordeal um, settling in the society and like, you know, mingling around with friends because there's always this uh, stereotype, uh, especially in Pakistan. I mean, that's what I believe and that's what I face. Uh, specifically in Pakistan, that if you're not, if you're towards the the healthier side or like more chunkier side, you will be picked on um, left, right, and center. So there's this concept of body shaming, which I'm, I'm, we're not gonna get into that. But I know one thing for a fact, like you know, uh, things are changing. Uh, people are adopting a much healthier lifestyle as compared to how it was like say 20 years ago. Um, so, you know, it's because of people like you, like, you know, health coaches who, who are actually trying to revolutionize or perhaps bring in a more healthier system uh, into, into, our, into, into, like, you know, into the entire um, grand scheme of things. Let's just put it that way. So thanks to you, man. Uh, really appreciate it. I remember going back to gym and like, you know, putting in a couple of hours on a daily basis just to shred those extra pounds. Uh, because uh, when I knew what a healthy lifestyle was, uh, until I had turned like what, 22, 23, so it was quite late, because now what I get to see with a lot of kids these days is that they start working out at an earlier age. So for them, it was a lot of exposure. I think exposure was a lot of exposure, but it was not a lot of exposure. I mean, um, I think with technology, yeah, so there's a lot of information. I can work for you and against you. Um, yeah. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't require anyone of, uh, uh, that, let's say, sound of mind to just click on any kind of link and, you know, get a program and start somewhere. Uh, the yeah. only thing is that, again, lack of uh, information is yeah. as bad as too much information because I've been down that road where I was starting off and, uh, you know, I would basically, I started off by just going to the gym very randomly with a friend and yeah. I would just follow what he was doing. So he would give me exercises to do. We would do them, do them together. And that was fine initially. Um, but then obviously as you get into it, which I certainly did and I started enjoying it, I became a little obsessed and I wanted to, um, you know, research and actually find out other programs that I could do that actually could be, you know, more useful to me. That being said, again, there were so many, you know, um, websites, so many articles, so many programs that I just got confused. And actually that hindered my progress because I was doing too much, too much of random things. Um, you know, um, uh, when I started training that it actually became counterproductive. So yeah. slowly, and even now I'm not saying that I know everything, even now I'm learning right now what works for me, what doesn't work for me. So like, um, that's what I want also people to like realize that yes, you can easily Google or YouTube a 30 minute workout and do that. But is that, is that making you any closer to your goals? Is that kind of workout beneficial? for you um so that's the only thing right now right so information can like i said can be a useful tool but at the same time it can actually yeah. work against you as well absolutely uh, access to information and technology has really really changed uh, the way we think the way we act so it's a good thing. I mean, at, at times I personally believe that it's a good thing because there are so many ways. So uh, during the lockdown, uh, predominantly what I did was that I started following um, this um, this uh, this channel or this particular individual. His name's a uh, uh, body coach or Joe Fix. So it really, really, truly motivated me into like following his routine on a daily basis. And uh, I did manage to lose uh, like what a decent amount of weight. But um, it was, you know, it has made it much, much easier. So Mustafa, uh, keeping today's session like, you know, super uh, informal, I would like to ask you a couple of questions from a, from a guy's uh, perspective, uh, considering that we are celebrating the Men's Health Month. So uh, what inspired you to become a health coach? Um... Hmm. Okay. So what inspired me? I don't know. It was actually very random when I started. Um, I think uh, I just basically wanted to, like anyone would, would want to look a certain way, right? So I think that's everyone's initial goal, that they want to look a certain way when they're training. Um, 
what inspired me was actually because I started to love the process so much. Um, nothing to do with the results. The results came later, but I just felt a lot better mentally, physically. Every time I stepped in the gym and I was trying to, you know, um, make a positive change in my life. So gradually that actually helped me um, somewhat find my passion very late. And I'm like, okay, I can see myself doing this. But at the same time, um, you know, it has to also be a little, uh, for me especially, um, you know, that kind of pressure that, okay, can this, this career be a career, especially in our society? Because, yeah. you know, I don't know why a lot of people look down on it, um, that it's nothing that a person should be proud about or should boast, uh, uh, should boast about. Um, but again, so what I did was I started training and I was working out just myself and uh, I was trying to just learn, you know, uh, research, educate myself. I did a couple of courses when I was in Canada um, with no real intention to like make it a career. But then at the end of the day, I knew, you know, like I would want to at least start off on a small scale. So what I did was uh, when I moved back from Canada, I started working at Dawn. Um, I was heading the marketing over there for about four, four and a half years. But simultaneously, I started Impulse, which was my boot camp, which was my group style classes. Um, again, I was just winging it. I didn't know what the response was going to be. Mashallah, Alhamdulillah, the response was actually really good. So I was like, okay, let me see how much can I juggle the corporate side as well as, you know, my passion, my passion project. Um, yeah. That just fueled the fire over the course of, let's say, a year and a half where I was kind of losing interest in the marketing aspect of uh, my job and kind of like solely focusing and wanting to solely focus on impulse where then I just, you know, literally, I think, uh, woke up one morning and I just thought to myself, I am going to quit and I'm going to dive fully head on into this, um, into my baby. Um, again, not knowing what the, uh, what the result would be, will it be sustainable? Um, you know, didn't really discuss it with anyone. Uh, I just knew that, you know, inside, I just knew I wanted to do this. Um, and I and I do believe that there's no right time or wrong time to kind of like take that step. You know, yeah. you'll only find out if it's a wrong or wrong, uh, right step only if um, you take it. And Alhamdulillah, it's been more than three years. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's been it's been doing uh, it's been doing well. I'm very happy with it. Um, and uh, inshallah, taking you know more steps towards making it bigger. Brilliant, man! Uh, wishing you all the best on that journey, on that particular journey. So you're a marketer by profession. That's what yeah. I'm assuming. All right, yeah. fantastic. So that kind of switch. Yeah, man, it's always great to like you know um, give your own baby that kind of input, as you mentioned, your baby. So that must have been like super uh, exhilarating at the end of the day because you're actually doing something that you enjoy. So yeah, must have been great. Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, I still still like marketing. That's something in the back of my head, but uh, yeah. it's uh, something I'm just trying to like. Uh, you know, it definitely will help me in the future. But just right now, I'm solely focusing on on fitness. Fair enough. Fair enough. So something that I'd like to add to this session, that men also tend to exhibit a fear of diagnosis. So about 21% of men admit to avoiding the doctor because they're either too nervous to find out what's uh, what might be going wrong with them, or it seems that the pressure uh, to conceal weaknesses is so strong that it can um, even lead men into a state of denial. And again, this is a very, a very varying statistic. So it's um, basically what Sayed Khan is trying to do this year. We're trying to create a very as much awareness as we can. So June is dedicated specifically to men's, uh, men's Health Awareness Month. Uh, for, yeah. for, for that particular reason, um, we'll be asking you myriad questions here on. So uh, Mustafa, my question next up to you, what do you mean by a healthy lifestyle? Mm, so like a healthy lifestyle for me, it needs to be um, sustainable, right? It needs yeah. to be something that you can adopt in the long run. It can't just be a phase. A lot of people over yeah. here, they adopt a phase and then they drop it like a bad habit. 
Um, yeah. So for me, a healthy lifestyle literally means a lifestyle which is something for the long run. Um, so if if I'm like let's say implementing it myself, I'm yeah. going to look at it in terms of not just my my workouts but also my my nutrition, um, my recovery, my sleep. I'm going to obviously uh, program it in a way where I know I can follow this day in day out without the stress that oh can I do this? Can I can I can I can I make this a habit? So yeah. I feel like when a person can just sit down or let's say coaches can just guide their clients and make a plan for them, which they know will allow them to follow it every day, day in, day out. Yeah. That for me is, in my opinion, the definition of a healthy lifestyle, right? So, um, yeah. and I feel like over here, again, the information is slowly, slowly becoming better. But at the same time, there still needs to be a lot of work done in terms of how people look at um, uh, being active, not adopting it as a phase, but as a habit. Once you adopt it as a habit, it then just becomes so natural to you, as natural as, let's say, getting up and drinking water, right? Yeah. So that, to me, I feel like would be uh, the right way to analyze uh, a healthy lifestyle. Fair enough, man. Fair enough. So, um, sort of like, you know, linking it to uh, the previous question, um, what are the parameters to assess good or decent health? In terms of, like, just say, are you, are you trying to say, like, in terms of a person's uh, um, lifestyle, like, generally, or what changes? Would yeah, be yeah, just generally. I mean, if I were to assess, like, uh, so there's BMI. I mean, if you were to talk about body mass oh, index. Oh, you're strictly talking in terms of fitness. Yes, yes, absolutely. Okay, yeah, I mean, yeah, obviously, like, if you're talking in strictly in terms of fitness, then, yeah, you look at their BMI, you look at their, um, let's say, your medical history, your injuries, um, you know, so all of that stuff does come into play. But um, I feel like, let's say if, so I'll take it back. And let, let's say if I'm trying to get a client and if I make a post about, you know, um, I'm, I have five spots left and I want five clients, right? So my yeah. first assessment would be, why would you want to adopt a healthy lifestyle? What is your reason? Is it A, to lose weight? Is yeah. it B to just be active? Is it is it C to be free of chronic diseases? You know, all of that come into play. So I feel like these parameters that have been there throughout, that comes later. But then you also yeah. need to kind of adopt, in my opinion, like a personal relationship with the client and then kind of like analyze why he or she wants to wants to um, adopt a, a, a healthy lifestyle, um, the parameters won't change. And I feel like if we emphasize too much on the parameters, like, hey, listen, this is your BMI, and then we need your body fat to be at a certain percentage. Right, okay, Jello, that's fine. Obviously, if a person yeah. is overweight, the main concern for that person, again, medically, would be to lose weight. So A, he or she could be free of a lot of these weight-related diseases. I get it, that's fine. So I get that, that that would be a target, right? But again, yeah. if, you're, if, if, if a trainer or a coach is setting body fat as a parameter just for aesthetic reasons, I feel like that is such a big mistake. And I feel like that's what needs to change because a lot of people are obsessed with the way we look outside, right? Yeah. The way we look outside, I mean, you can see a person and actually that happens with me a lot as well that, when you look a certain way, let's say you're looking like a magazine cover model, you've got, you know, the aesthetic look, you don't know how he or she is feeling on the inside to get to that point. Like I've been there where let's yeah. say I've dropped my body fat percentage to a point that, okay, yes, I might be looking good, but I know for a fact that internally I'm not feeling good. My energy yeah. levels are close to zero. I'm almost like, you know, I, I don't even feel like working out, but I just do it because it is part of my job. And, you know, I do want to continue to look a certain way, but I didn't feel the way yeah. I felt about myself. Right. So yeah. um, me personally, I would not look at BMI as a, um, a very important parameter. I would, right. I would actually talk about 
my clients or my potential clients' mental health and Absolutely. how he or she would want to adopt and how she or how he or she would think that adopting a healthy lifestyle would help them mentally. You know? Yeah. Which can be related to, I mean, as you just mentioned, mental health. So mental health, I'm sure that plays a very significant role in the entire diaspora of things like uh if i were to like you know come I, i'm just going to ask about layman in layman's term um terms ki if somebody were to come to you and is not in a good state or is not in a good mental state so how do you like you know facilitate that particular individual uh does it like you know does it require a lot of effort from your end how how does it work out because getting that particular individual into, into that right um state of frame of mind uh to to kind of you know motivate them into working out that must take a lot of uh, because kuch hote hain log that they it's not that they're mentally affected uh ki they they don't really necessarily want to work out they just come to the gym i've seen a lot of people just like you know standing by and like not doing much so us situation and what do you do like how do you like you know sort of um what's your way uh, to get them more involved in <clears throat> in the into the entire uh, working out bit okay so you have to first look at it as like baby steps especially for a person who's never trained before in their lives right so yeah. if you set the bar too high too fast you're setting them up for failure right yeah. so what i would do is and actually a lot of some some clients when i teach my group classes i have a lot of people who have been training for let's say years months weeks whatever but also have a lot of people who haven't worked out in their lives so what yeah. i make them do is like a it's literally the fact that they're coming in to work out is um it's a victory for them right because right. you also have to see and i know for a fact that when i started working out i felt very intimidated that i'm going to be in an environment that i'm not comfortable with obviously because we all start somewhere all yeah. the people that you see the elite athletes coaches they all started somewhere they all started as a beginner so that initial fear or that initial intimidation i felt that too so when a person yeah. walks into my class um yeah. i actually you know i actually pat them on their back for actually making it out there getting out of their comfort zone that yeah. itself and if they can just be consistent let's say they're coming to my class five times a week and basically just doing 10 minutes of just stretching and learning the movements getting the body mechanics right that is such a big step for them which yeah. i also try to keep reinforcing that hey listen i'm proud of you you made it you made it one week consistently what i want you to do yeah. next week is make it two weeks consistently even if you don't give me the output don't uh-huh. don't look at the people around you right because if you start looking at the people around you you're setting again yourself up for failure you're like oh look at this guy he's or uh, lifting 300 pounds or whatever or look at this yeah. girl she's squatting like you know but i want to squat but again they all started somewhere so for me if i had to and i actually do this consist uh, with all my new clients is yeah. that yeah. if they can just consistently walk through the door that's all they need to do right yeah. then you kind of like take over the reins then you'll be like okay listen you've made it here now it's my job it's my job to make you consistent now how do you make a client consistent if you make him or she do something so insanely tough mm-hmm. right they're yeah. not going to then they're not going to want to come they'll be like listen i've had enough of it that that was tough i i i gasped yeah. out i i don't i they they actually will feel a lot worse why would they want to come back so you have to you have to find that common ground that okay this yeah. person has never done this before how will i make this journey easier for them? you know would it be through proper communication right yeah um uh through uh setting up a good environment for them you know yeah. and also making them know every day that they are actually making a good positive step for their lives hmm. so just that reinforcement goes a long way absolutely man and we've started that in psychology as well positive reinforcement it always helps right so yes, right 
तो इसको ही हम लिंक करते हैं वंस अगेन आई एम जस्ट गोना टॉक अबाउट सम एंजाइटी डिप्रेशन एंड सेल्फ एस्टीम इश्यूज सो देयर आर पीपल हु कम एंड वेल इसको लिंक उससे भी करते हैं कि बेबी स्टेप्स लेते हुए देयर आर इश्यूज सच एज एंजाइटी डिप्रेशन एंड सेल्फ एस्टीम व्हिच आर कॉमनली चाइल्ड अबाउट दैट व्हिच आर कॉमनली एड्रेस या कैन यू हियर मी यस 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 आई हियर यू या तो लिंक करते हुए कि इश्यूज सच एज एंजाइटी डिप्रेशन एंड सेल्फ एस्टीम इश्यूज आर नॉट कॉमनली एड्रेस डज वर्किंग आउट हेल्प दीज पर्टिकुलर इश्यूज सॉरी मोहित यू यू ड्रिंक कैच द लास्ट पार्ट व्हाट वाज इट या सो जस्ट वंडरिंग कि इश्यूज सच एज एंजाइटी डिप्रेशन एंड सेल्फ एस्टीम इश्यूज आर नॉट कॉमनली एड्रेस Yes. So, working out does that help out uh, to relieve or alleviate you of these issues? I mean, okay. So, I think that's a little subjective. Yes, it can, but again, it needs to kind of fall in a more cohesive plan. Yeah. Right. So, yes. um, I mean, yeah. If you think about it scientifically and like in terms of what research has said, that yes, it does help a person mentally. Um, yeah. like for me it does um but again my i have a i have deep deep roots with fitness right okay yeah. so does it help someone mentally who's a newcomer right yeah. um i think i think that is a bit subjective because what if that newcomer doesn't like to work out is only doing this for losing weight um is only doing this to i don't know uh look a certain way for a for an event and then just you know stop working out um so in order to again make a person fall in love with the process you kind of have to start from scratch and then he or she will realize that yes in the long run once you start feeling good feeling not looking once you start feeling good because the body and the mind is so connected okay so once you start adopting everything that is good for you you will start feeling good you start feeling good about yourself you start feeling good about the way you're uh waking up and you're looking forward to something so you have to help the client kind of in the initial stages kind of fall in love with it as well where he or she is looking forward to it that doesn't have to do with just fitness it could be anything it could be um you know if a person wants to try out an arts class or a new instrument right how will he or she know that this is going to help him or her mentally unless that unless a obviously that the person does it consistently but also is guided the right way right so again it's it, it all depends on how well the plan is set up with the individual and the expert and this goes i think for every field with every uh, expert in every field they need to sort of help the person transition um especially especially if that individual him or herself is going through something um that is uh, traumatic or if they have mental health problems um so i think again like i said that answer is very subjective i can't say yes it does right if i say yes it does and then a person says okay so mustafa says fitness is good for your mental health i want to go do some fitness but what if that person is going to someone who absolutely knows nothing about training and is making him or her do something that's actually worse for them you know so um i would say don't take anyone's word for it i i would say to, to try out what what calls your name out what you feel yeah. more attached to try it out make sure you are going to the right people who will guide you the right way yeah. and then consistently you will then start feeling good but again all de- depends on the foundation right if the foundation is weak you know the entire building is going to crumble so if the yeah. foundation is not set the right way you again you're not going to you're not going to succeed yeah uh many bots are like you know when i started working out i remember like i'm going to a couple of people um to sort of like you know lose that kind of baby fat i'm going to say baby fat because it was kind of, i was towards the chunkier side right so the, the day i started working out these guys used to put me on like 
crazy regimens where I was supposed to like, you know, put in like a hundred push-ups or 200 sit-ups. And then like, but by the next day, I didn't want to go back to the gym. So the expectations, uh, the, there are a lot of kids uh, who still think that if we go to the gym, then we will be able to do it so, which is why they don't go back because they're so scared of the entire thing, the, the, the entire phenomena. So, a lot of people just like, you know, back out or back off because um, I mean, they back, back out because, like you said, why do, why do they back out? Yeah. It's just because a model, your model is right? Uh, Gradually Hello? or slowly, Sorry. Uh, ki zada, ki wo pressure na hai, mere that's what I think. Yeah, I mean, and, and I think I also kind of went through that period too where I was guided, uh, you know, the wrong way, I guess. Um, but you live and you learn and then you kind of like go through the process and you kind of like educate yourself, right? And also that the yeah. process of learning never stops. Um, Absolutely. So, but again, see now the misconception over here is also like you do something crazy, your heart rate spikes up, you feel a lot better, uh, you supposedly feel a lot better because you're sweating. But then again, long term wise, that doesn't really do anything for you. Actually, a lot of research has shown that if you do a lot of high intensity workouts, something that right. actually is not sustainable in the long run, it's going to raise your cortisol levels. It's actually going to make you more stressed out. Your body yeah. doesn't recover the way it's supposed to. Um, you start regressing. And then you then realize, okay, okay wait, I'm, a, I'm a supposedly be a supposedly killing it in the gym. Why am I not seeing the results? Because, uh-huh. you know, that stuff is very short lived. Um, so again, it's, it's guidance. It's all about guidance. Absolutely. Yeah, people tend to misguide you from time to time. So, I mean, just that I'm sure we were talking about the fact that technology and like, you know, media plays a lot of, um, has really truly changed the way that we truly function now, or perhaps like, you know, put in that extra effort because of our more exposure. Hai so for all those people who are watching right now, you don't need to go to the first day and do 100 push-ups. Karo. Slowly and gradually, like that's how you build up your uh, body. I that's what I personally believe. Eight din mein to hona nahi hai sara kuch. So it takes some time. Uh, Mustafa, there's this uh, th- there's this uh, myth kamo yeah, like you know there's this belief. A lot of people say that seventy percent is your diet, whereas thirty percent is your workout. How true is this particular statement? Um. Well, again, if you're looking at it as a, from an aesthetic point of view, there are two huh. mindsets. Let's say if yeah. client A, and I'll talk about two mindsets of a person. Let's say if client A goes to a trainer or a coach and says, listen, yeah. I don't care about anything. I want to look a certain way. I want to get huh. six pack. I want to get shredded. I want to get lean. I want to get vascular. So yeah. yes, but then obviously diet becomes their priority where they're just looking at what they're eating. They're they're counting the calories. They're they're basically weighing and measuring everything because their goal at the end of the day is I just want to look a certain way. Now, yeah. diet in terms of being healthy and feeling good is probably and not 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 about looking good. It's probably even more than seventy percent because. Okay. If a person who's not, let's say if a person who's not working out, right, he or she does a 30 minute walk and that's all they do, right? Which is still good, yeah. right? That's still being active. But they're adopting so much more, like they're adopting a healthy lifestyle outside that walk, outside that 30 minute walk where they're looking after themselves, they're eating the right quality foods, they're, they're uh, focusing and prioritize, uh, giving priority to nutrient dense food, Hmm. they will in the long run feel a lot better compared to someone who's killing him, killing him or self at the gym and then sticking to a very low calorie uh, diet. Um, I would say, first of all, I don't even like the word diet. I would say (laughs) food, food, right? Nutrition and food adopt a food plan or adopt healthy habits when it comes to food that will make you want to feel good in the next 40-50 years of your life. 
Absolutely. It all depends on how you are in the in the long run, right? So, um, yeah. So again, like I know these answers are not what people are probably wanting to hear, and they want to hear that oh yes, it is seventy percent diet. Yeah, okay, yeah, it's seventy percent diet, but then depends on what your goals are also, right? So yeah. I would say ditch the idea of a diet. Just we need to adopt healthy uh, food habits. Yeah. Um, you know, starving yourself isn't the way to go. You have to feed your body. Your body has a mind. You know, a lot of people talk about gut health. And the more research I've been doing, and I actually am not that educated, I, and I like that because that makes me want to learn more. But mm-hmm. whatever research and whatever studies I've done in gut health, it has such a big role in how we feel. Um, yeah. it, it, it's just, it's just, it, it's just mind boggling how our gut can send these signals to our brain, to our organs, to our, even the way we feel mentally. Um, yeah. And it all goes down to what we're eating, right? So, you know, start, stop looking at food and thinking, is this going to make me look good? Start looking at food and, and, and think to yourself, is this going to make me feel good and be disease free? Uh, where I can even be a healthy 70 year old going out every day, on my walks, on my runs, being active. That's how we should look at, you know, diet. Yeah. <clears throat> so, isko, like, consider karte hue. I'm pretty sure your thoughts about different diet plans, such as keto or OMAN, uh, what, what are your thoughts about these diets? Like, you know, there are a lot of people who, who follow keto regimen or like OMAD regimen. What's your, what's your yeah. take on these diets? Man, uh... <laughs> Okay, I don't, I don't, the thing is, okay, so I have people, I have clients who do keto, I have clients who do intermittent fasting. Um, yeah. If someone comes to me and asks me, should I do this? I'll ask them, why do you want to do that? Why? Yeah. Okay, let's say if a person wants to do keto. What's keto? It's basically a high protein, high fat diet, right? So you're eliminating carbs. Yeah. I would ask them, A, why do you think carbs are the problem? Why are you eliminating carbs that you feel like a high protein and a high fat diet would work for you. Now I would listen yeah. to their answers and then I would guide them accordingly. Right? Same thing. Now the person says, Oh, I'm I, I feel like carbs bloat me. All right. Well, maybe the kind of carbs you're having bloat you, but generally carbs probably don't. Right? Yeah. So for me, gluten is a big uh like it I don't I I don't sit well with gluten. Right? right, and there are a lot of there's a lot of gluten in a lot of uh, carbs, but there's also right. gluten free carbs, right? So are carbs a problem, or a certain element that you know, like let's say the gluten that you find in carbs, is that the problem? Now, right. when a person comes up to me and says, "Oh man, I can only have one meal a day," I would ask them why. So if the answer is I don't get time, even though I don't think that's true, but people say I don't get time to eat, I'm like, okay, if one meal a day fits your current lifestyle where in that one meal you are able to eat all the nutrients all the calories all your macros and it works for you you feel energetic you don't feel you don't feel uh, let's say you know uh, what do you call it uh, weak you don't feel the need to eat and you're uh, starving yourself i would say okay go for it right but yeah. if a person thinks that having one meal a day will make them automatically lose weight i would say why why do you think that's the case Yes, uh, it probably would if you're having a very low calorie one meal a day, which is probably like one of the worst ideas ever. Yeah. But if and on the flip side, okay, on the flip side, if a person is having one meal a day, but in that one meal, he or she's having like, let's say, an abundance of calories, more calories and then it's required of them, they'll gain weight. Yeah. They will gain weight, right? So you can gain weight on keto you can lose weight on keto you can gain weight eating one meal a day you can lose weight uh, eating one meal a day you can gain weight eating 10 meals a day you can gain weight uh, you can lose weight losing 10 uh, eating 10 meals a day it all depends yeah. on how much you're having it right so right. whenever a person comes up to me about a diet i'll just be like why and then we take it from there yeah, uh, I know of. Uh, that being situation. said, I love carbs way too much to do keto. <laughs> I do not like keto. I, 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 I hate keto. But again, it works for certain people. Am I going to say 
going to keto, then all these keto warriors will probably kill me, but I don't want to do that. So yeah, they're going to troll you, man. They'll definitely yeah. control you. Yeah. Um, so this is what I've observed. So when you're not taking in carbs, that kind of makes you cranky. I've tried it. So there was this one point in time when I started following this cabbage soup regimen, right? So it was just cabbage, very cabbage soup all day long. And, like, you know, I did uh, lose a lot of weight, but that made me so miserable. That made me impossibly unbearable. People around me just didn't want to put up with me because you do need carbs. You do need that kind of like, you know, balance in your body. But, uh, Usually, uh, we have this thing on our mind that we need to lose that kind of weight. But weight chadana asane utarna utna hi mushkil hai. Ye log samajhte nahi hai, aur unko lagta hai ki ek hafte ke andar they'll shred all their um, fat. But that's not possible. That 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 certainly does not happen. So, ek to I would want to ask you something next up that uh, that I want to ask is ki hamari jo Pakistani khane. उसको मद्देनजर रखते हैं कीपिंग दैट इन परसेप्शन कब व्हेन शुड यू स्टॉप ईटिंग आखिरी टाइम कब होना चाहिए कि आपने अपना डिनर कर लिया है या ब्रेकफास्ट या लंच मगर डिनर इज लाइक सबसे ज्यादा इंपॉर्टेंट ये चीज है कि लोग खाना खाते हैं पाकिस्तान में 10 बजे 11 बजे एंड देन दे टेंड टू स्लीप समवेयर अराउंड लाइक यू नो 11:30 12 बजे इज दैट अ हेल्दी थिंग टू डू इफ यू कैन शेड सम लाइट ऑन दैट प्लीज Listen again. Dinner depends on what your schedule is, right? So a lot of people that I yeah. know get done with work very late. They get done around I don't know nine, ten o'clock. By the time they shower, yeah. wind down, and they eat dinner, it's close to ten thirty and eleven. So yeah. it all depends on your lifestyle. There's nothing wrong with having a late dinner, right? There's nothing wrong. You know, I've had late dinners, I've had early dinners. Depends on my on my day. On average, I have dinner around ten p.m. because my current lifestyle, my current schedule, doesn't mm. allow me to have dinner before that. On the flip side, on my days off, on a Sunday, right. I'd like to have my dinner early. No particular reason in terms of this will make me lose weight. No, but I just like having a light, uh, uh, an early dinner. So there is for the people who think that having a late dinner will make them gain weight. No, that's not true. Yes, it depends on what you're having and how much you're having of it. So I'll tell you what. So we, I hate using the word calorie deficit, calorie surplus, but that's what it is, right? If yeah. you are consuming more calories. Yeah. Let's say if if Moise, you are burning twenty five hundred calories in a day daily, you're burning twenty five hundred calories, ah. and your goal is to lose weight. What you need to do is you need to have something that's a little less. You're going to be in a deficit, so your deficit would be anything below twenty five hundred, right? So if you're sticking with right. that, no matter what, when you eat, that doesn't matter. My only thing is ah. for me personally, and this is nothing to do with how. Uh, uh, I'm not looking at it as if I'm going to lose weight, but I like to have early dinner because. I want to give myself a little time to digest because then my sleep gets disrupted, right? Yeah. That is just me, and I think a lot of people. And there is a, a scientific uh, uh, backing to this theory as well that if you eat close to if you eat close to your uh, let's say sleeping uh, sleeping time, it might yeah. disrupt sleep. But at the end of the day, that's just how it is, right? So if you're a person who can go yeah. to sleep and then can sleep. You know, soundly sleep for seven to nine hours, and you're waking up fresh. Then yeah, go for it. In terms of weight, there is no reason why you will gain weight eating at a certain time, or you will lose weight eating at a certain time, right? So, time, frequency of meal, and time have nothing to do with weight gain or weight loss. There yeah. and okay. there is no correlation to that. There is no link. Okay. Fair enough, because we get to hear this quite often, right? Coffee is other sources. Say, so Nico, I think that from seven to eight o'clock, you should try to wrap up your meals so that um, you know it helps you digest that particular uh, uh, whatever you're eating, and then you uh, get apparently fat deposits. Both other parts are there, which I was researching. तो उसके ऊपर मुझे मैंने आई थॉट कि हम लोग को इसके ऊपर बात करनी है. So uh, according to Mustafa. You can eat at any uh, particular. But I'm actually very interested. So, what do you mean? You did research, and you said that you develop or you get more fat deposits if you eat close to your sleeping time. Yeah, huh. if you go eat closer to sleeping time, uh, perhaps it like you know tends to increase your weight. So that's that's just a myth, eh? No, that's a myth. Just like how people, for some reason, say that having carbs after seven p.m. is bad for you. Huh. Yeah, okay. I mean, I don't understand. So if I have a, a carbs at seven, uh, at six p.m., it's good yeah. for me. But after seven p.m., it's bad for me. Huh. Why does seven p.m. make a difference? I don't understand. Like, why? What's yeah. the reason? Why? 
I need to know. Yeah. There is no reason. Food is food, right? I have eaten and I've done this myself. I've done, you know, I've done intermittent fasting. I've, I've eaten five meals a day. I've eaten every two yeah. hours. It all depends. And I spoke to one of my clients about it. I said the problem with people and how they look at food, right? So I have nothing yeah. wrong with quote unquote junk food. I have nothing wrong with that. That's food. Enjoy life. That's we live once, life short. It's cliched, but that's how life is. It is short. Yeah. But at the it end is. of the day, what my issue is, what what is the food made out of? What are the ingredients that you're putting inside? How processed yeah. is it? Is it gonna is it gonna you know um, uh, uh, how harmful it will it be for your for your system for your digestive system? That's my only thing, and I only yeah. do this because I personally am going had gone through that. So um, there is no reason why you gain weight eating after seven. After seven thirty, yeah. Chalo cool. Today onwards, because every time right. I used to eat pizza at like eleven or twelve in the in the in the night, I used to feel like super guilty. Yeah, up so much at time. Oh yeah, I'm gonna gain so much weight in the morning. And uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I felt that too. That. I I actually I actually thought that too. I would do that. I would. Cut carbs off after 7 p.m. when I was starting to work uh-huh. out in, in the initial four five years. I'm like, oh no, no carbs after 7 p.m. is uh-huh. going to make me gain weight. So after 7 yeah. p.m., done. There no, we are. I have carbs now at 10 p.m. and I'm a lot older. Apparently, like yeah. my metabolism should go down, but mashallah, it's completely fine. Mashallah, uh, Mustafa. Let me since you brought up metabolism, let me ask you something. So uh, after thirty, that's what they say. Uh, after thirty, your metabolism kind of slows down. Is that true? Yeah, they can, yeah, as, you, as you grow as you grow older, yes, metabolism can go down. Um, obviously, not just that. Um, testosterone that's produced uh, naturally in the body goes down. But does that mean that you're not going to see changes? No. No, the reason why. I, yeah, sorry, I'm gonna cut in. The reason why I ask you is because you get to interact with a lot of people. I'm sure you get to interact with a lot of um, uh, with people who are older than 30 or probably 30 plus. And uh, does it like you know, unka system? I'm 30 uh, plus, man. Are you trying to say that I'm old? Is it? Ah, okay. I'm 30. I'm turning 32. Oh. What the hell? Oh, mashallah, man. So how's your metabolism working out for you, man? Uh, Alhamdulillah, it's been fine uh-huh. because I made certain changes. Yeah. Yes, I'm not eating the way I used to when I was a kid. Uh, yeah. I can't eat the way I was eating as a Of kid. course, man. When I was a teenager, I would go through a box of pizza like it was nothing and I'd be yeah. okay to eat more. Now if I have even three, four slices, I get full. But that's okay. So when you uh-huh. age, you just embrace everything. You yeah. embrace your physical changes. You embrace your internal changes. And then, yeah, obviously, you have to work around them. You have to make certain changes, and it's okay. That's just life, you know. Um, uh, okay. The same way a person would not, the way you dress at 18 would be very yeah. different from the way you dress at 40, in a yeah. way, right? So why, I mean, I mean, you're okay with that change. Why are people not okay with making changes around their food just so they can, you know, I don't know, feel better? But yeah. does that mean you still can't eat what you want to eat? Yes, you can. Just we have to everything in moderation and everything yeah. in balance, right? So yeah. I don't want people to think that I don't eat all these comfort foods. I do. I just like to uh, space them out, um, and I actually enjoy what I eat. I look forward yeah. to what I eat every day. I don't look at my food like as like something that I need to eat, and oh, I'm clocking in, and I have to clock yeah. out, and or mm-hmm. no, I look at every day as yeah. a new day to eat food. Maybe have something yeah. new. Maybe try something new. Fair enough, man. That's that's brilliant advice. Uh, because a lot of people, a lot of people think that like you know, a certain age aati hai, just ke baad, you're not supposed to have um, kuch khane hote hain, jo nahi khane chahiye. Especially roti or chawal. That's I. Keep hearing about this thing. Ke, yaar, 30 cross kar gayo, ab roti na khao. Ye Pakistani ek almi hai. Ke, try to avoid it as much as you can because it's just going to give you belly fat. It's just going to give you fat. Okay. So, sir, sir yeah. roti, roti or chawal ka masla nahi hai. Maa ko bada masla kya hai. Masla hai ke log jab roti khate hai, wo koi 10-12 khale. <laughs> okay. Now, on the yeah. flip side, I'll give an example. And if any of my clients are listening, then uh. I'll give this example as well. <laughs> having an apple 
apple is nutritious right it's yeah. a fruit it's nutritious it has iron uh, it has a lot of other minerals a lot of other uh, very important macronutrients but if i will start having two three dozens of apples every day for me even though apple yeah. is supposed to be healthy right yeah. of course so and the flip side the whole roti chawal sorry no no of course go for it so the whole concept of roti chawal man rice is good for you have roti have anything you want just try to stick to moderate levels that's all yeah moderation that's all there is yeah absolutely बिल्कुल सही है यार मुस्तफा माय नेक्स्ट एक डिलेमा होता है बहुत सारे लोगों के अंदर हु वर्क नाइन टू फाइव आई मीन यू यू बिन अ मार्केट एरिया योर सेल्फ यू वर्क इन द एंटायर नाइन टू फाइव सेटअप एम एम एज वी एज वी टॉकिंग अर्लियर सो कमिटमेंट लाना टाइम लाना एफर्ट लाना एक बहुत ज्यादा इशू हो जाता है सो हाउ शुड लाइक यू नो अ ले मैन हु वर्क नाइन टू फाइव गैदर द करज टू डू इट लाइक हाउ डू यू लाइक यू नो मोटिवेट that person ke bhai aapne karna hai aur workout karna hai how do you motivate or inspire your clients jo 9 se 5 tak kaam kar rahe hote hain well first when you ask them like what's the ideal time where they can do it right huh. what what time does their life schedule allow them to do it uh where they're less stressed where they feel like they're not going to skip on workouts too much let's say a person who Works late. I would never say, okay, then you train in the evenings. No, I would say wake up early, get it out of the way. Okay. Huh. Uh, but again, I would say start light. Start with just going for a thirty-minute walk, or just stretch for thirty minutes. So yeah, huh. you start light. You give them small, small goals, and those small, small goals, just say then, but they're going again. They start taking off those small, small goals. They then mentally, what I've experienced with my clients, they then mentally start thinking that okay, I'm taking these small goals, and I'm looking forward to what's coming up next. Then you start mm-hmm. setting up bigger goals. Then you say, okay, fine, you've started stretching, you started walking. Now let's start coming to the gym for like 20 minutes, right? Up 20 minutes, kill it, Ajay. Okay, just start off something very, very small, and that can allow you to do the uh, the the. the the workout properly uh, pro- uh, properly and as well as yeah. able to uh, continue on with your daily life so you have to ah. look at a person's schedule and then figure out what works for them if you set them up say that no you need to work out here without knowing the schedule hmm. that's not going to work that's not going to work at all so uh, you look at the schedule you look at their pattern a lot of people have family Uh, have families they want to spend time right. with their children their wives whatever their husbands um to agar wo mujhe bolne ke ji after work i want to spend time with my family and if i say no come work out at 7 pm he yeah. or she might come but then they're going to start yeah. skipping right so how does that work long term of course so that's it fair enough fair enough सो मुसब अभी कोविड चल रहा है पेंडेमिक चल रहा है पिछले एक डेढ़ साल से एंड जिम जाना बहुत मुश्किल हो गया था सो हाउ हैज इट इफेक्टेड योर क्लाइंट हाउ हैज इट इम्पैक्टेड योर बिजनेस मॉडल और पीपल बिन अप्रोचिंग यू टू डू द एंटायर ऑनलाइन वर्कआउट रूटीन और हाउ डज इट वर्क आउट आई थिंक इनिशियली वन लॉकडाउन स्टार्टेड आई थिंक ऑब्वियसली विद जिम्स क्लोजिंग डाउन um online was the only way to go uh yeah. and then that's actually when i started uh, with four friends and coaches of mine to do virtualetics which is an online platform where all five of us got together and we programmed workouts and it was actually um it was actually very uh groundbreaking in a way because i don't think anyone was doing it in the country at that time where you uh-huh. have five different coaches coming together to give you one hybrid program um so uh that was challenging because i had never done online um you know training someone in person was so easy for me because i was doing it for such a long time plus i like yeah. and i know a lot of other people they feed off energy that you know when they're training someone when they're in a class you have people working out you have people making better choices trying to be better that in- it's, itself inspires you 
So obviously the challenge yeah. that we faced was a switching the platform completely to digital and trying oh. to motivate the client the same way that you would motivate them while they come to the gym, which is really hard because right. again, you have people who are in their rooms, in their houses, they don't have equipment. So um, it was challenging them. Uh, it was it was challenging uh, to a create the platform, convince people that you know, like you know, you still need to you still need to train, you need to work out, you need to move, you need to be active. It's all part of your immunity. It's all part of your process. Um, of course. So everything's switched online, and uh, so yeah, it was challenging, and it still is challenging to some extent. You know, situation becomes better, then it becomes worse. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but, but then, yeah, I think it was challenging for everyone, not just like people in the fitness industry, but a lot of small businesses. Uh, and, uh, so the only thing is you just kind of have to like push through it. You kind of have to be positive about it, uh, that, you know, this will pass and then you need to keep, you need to keep innovating. I feel like innovation was also something that was, uh, pretty much there during lockdown. We all started thinking of ways of how to not just pass the time, but how to be productive, how to do work. Um, so yeah, it was a, somewhat of a blessing in disguise, but now, because now online is something that I know I can be comfortable with if I still want to do that in the future. Uh, Mustafa, thank you so much, man. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, Mustafa, any parting words for the followers or the audiences? Um, yeah, I would just say that strictly to, talking in terms of health, um, you live once, um, that's a fact you live once, uh, treat your bodies right. Um, you know, learn to manage your life outside um, the, 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 the whole training aspect of it. Learn to love yourself. Learn to like also listen to your body. Your body is giving you signs constantly, whether it's, let's say, in terms of just cravings or in terms of just your mental aspect. Listen to your body. Um, and then just enjoy life. Don't have such, such strict rules where you're like, oh, I need to just look a certain way. No, you need to feel good. See what fe- makes you feel good and, yeah. and, and then just dive straight into it. That's all I want to say. I don't want to part ways with like saying that, oh, you know, fitness is the way to life. No, fitness is not, you know, and if yeah. fitness is not your thing, then that's fine. That's okay. Feel, feel, yeah. feel okay. To admit that, okay, I don't want to do these kind of like extreme strict regimes. Find something that works for you. If it's yoga, go for yoga. If it's swimming, swimming. If it's horse riding, biking, walking, running, whatever, whatever, you know, makes you happy. But again, treat your bodies right because again, we only live once, right? You only have your body that you live in. So if you're not treating yourself in that way... You're not gonna. You're not gonna. Um, you're not gonna feel good, and you're not gonna actually. You're gonna start. You're. You're gonna start. In my opinion, um, creating more problems for yourself. So um, yeah, and always seek help. Seek help in everything. Never feel shy about seeking help. I feel like that's very underrated, and a lot of people should. Yeah. Absolutely, Mustafa. Thank you so much for joining us, man. Uh, for all those thank people. You. Who- this session they can uh, always get in touch with uh, mustafa impulse.pk um that's mustafa's baby as he put out earlier and uh, <laughs> um yeah it is important um, as a man especially because we're talking about men's health month uh, it is absolutely important to brush up on your health facts listen to your body just like mustafa uh, put out earlier and be sure to get uh, regular checkups not only will you live longer, you will have a better quality of life as well. So um, thank you so much, Mustafa. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure, uh, as always, uh, to be invited by people who are doing such a, such a good job um, to the community. And you guys are doing amazing. So thank you so much. I feel honored for you guys. I, I feel honored that you guys invited me to your platform. And uh, wish you guys the best of luck in all your projects and uh, future work. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you, Mr. Bell. All right, guys. Until next time. What is up? Take care. Thank you. Okay, Jake. Assalamu alaikum.